Hi there, this is George. How you doing? Well, unfortunately, this time on the record, there's only me and John. I know everyone's going to start really complaining, but there's nothing really we can do about it. As you know, a lot of the problems with Culture Club at the moment are the fact that Roy and Mikey are both tax exiles, which is really, really kind of causing a lot of problems for the band. And it's one of the reasons why we can't play in England at the moment, is because Roy and Mikey are out of the country. And I know I'm not supposed to be telling you this, but I am anyway, because then you understand exactly what the situation is. Now, Sue has told me that a lot of the complaints have been about the fact that we won't be having a single out this year. Really, honestly, I mean, I can't tell you, I, there's nobody in the whole world that wants to put out a record more than me. We've recorded four tracks and I think they're brilliant and I really, really want to put a single out. I mean, you know, you can tell, I mean, I just really want to do it. I'm so bored. I can't tell you how bored I am. I'm so bored with the charts, with magazines, just everything is so boring at the moment. I mean, you know, I don't want to slag off other bands, but the charts are so bad. And so, you know, I really want to put a record out, but we can't do that. And I'll explain the reasons why, so you understand exactly why. And you don't think it's just because we're, like, planning all these things. What I want to tell you is that in America, if you release a single without an album, it kind of messes up the album. And also, you know, what I want to do is when we put out the next single, I want the album to be right after it. And I want you to be able to say, yeah, what a great album. And you haven't to wait ages for the album. If we put our single before Christmas, we won't have anything to follow it up. And then you're going to start moaning. You can say, where's the album? Where's the album? So what I want to do is I'm going to tell you what, exactly what we're going to do. We go to Holland in about two weeks. And we're going to finish uh, writing all the songs for the album. There's some really, really good songs. I'm so pleased. And uh, we've got this new producer called Arif Mardin. And, you know, when I put out the next album, I don't want it to be a crummy album. Do you know what I mean? I want it to be really something worth waiting for. It's like The Kiss. I remember there's this one fan... It was really good. And I kept seeing her everywhere. And she said to me, she didn't want to... Because, you know, I always kiss everybody. She said, I want to kiss nobody. I like, don't want you to kiss me because... She said, if it's worth having, it's worth waiting for. And that's the kind of tactics I'm applying to this new album because <coughs> it really has to be great. And you're going to be just as critical because you've waited so long. You know, and you've stuck with us. I mean, like, you know... And don't forget, I keep reminding you how much we appreciate that. You know, the fans that we've got in our fan club now are really loyal. You know, you are the loyal fan club members. And so, obviously, you know, I feel really guilty because every time we put out a record, I'm saying, oh, it'll be in September. But it will definitely be at the end of January. And I want it to be good. I don't want you to turn around to me and say, oh, you know, if you don't like it, it's, it's average. It's got to be great, you know, because you've waited so long and you've stuck with us. You've been loyal. Yeah, and, you know, we've done our bit to try and make the fan club as, as good as possible because... You know, now the fan club's catering for people who have been really loyal, which is you. And uh, I just want the new album to be brilliant. I want it to be so good. I want you to write in and say, God, it's really been worth waiting for. And I hope you will. And I think you will. And that's the reason why I'm confident in waiting until next year. We're going to be recording in December. And we'll have everything finished and mixed. And the album, it's going to be, you know, actually, it's not that long, really, when you think about it. I know you've waited ages and ages, but... You're going to get so sick of the sight of my face in January and February and March and all next year you're going to say, oh, well, it was worth waiting for because, you know, I want to plan something really good and I don't want it to be really average and boring. I want it to be something really interesting. And so, you know, like, I think, I think you're going to appreciate it when it comes out. We've worked really hard, I mean, especially with my singing. I've really, really been, you know, concentrating on getting it great, you know, not just sort of, like, going in and singing. I mean, I've really thought about it and really put my heart into it, you know? Because I think that's the problem with a lot of bands. When you get successful, you forget, you know, what it's like being hungry. And you know, when you're hungry, you learn to survive. You remember that song? Changing every day, changing every day. You know, it says that, there's a line in it which says, when people get hungry, they learn how to survive, changing every day. Well, that's another thing that, um, I think it's been missing from Culture Club, you know, the fact that, you know, we all got very rich and we had loads of money and you forget what's important and, um, you know, all that slagging in the press and saying how rubbishy we, uh, we were did us a really lot of good, it did me a lot of good as a person because I think, well, right, maybe I agree with some of it. I mean, a lot of the criticism I don't agree with and I'm sure you'll back me up on that because you know that, you know, I work really hard and, and, and also, you know, that I really love what I'm doing. I'm not just doing it to make money. So, you know, on the next album and the next single, I've got to show that what I'm singing about is really coming from inside. It's not just some cheap drivel, you know, made up in the studio. I mean, I've, 
I've tried to write songs that are really, you know, that have got feeling in them. So when you listen to them, you know, you're not just going to say, oh yeah, that's a good pop song. Songs that you can really relate to, you know, and songs like Victims. You know, even when I listen to Victims now and I sing Victims, when we just did the tour and I sung Victims, you know, that song is like, it, it really means something to me. Because when I wrote it, I really felt like all those things I was singing were really real, you know. And, uh, and that's what I want. I want to write songs like that. I don't want to write songs that are just boring, cheap old songs. So I want you to sort of like, when the next album comes out, I want you to say, yeah, it's been brilliant and worth waiting for. And uh, another thing what I might be doing, I mean, this is not definite. There's this um, AIDS benefit which might be happening in England before Christmas, and I might be taking part in that. And if I take part in that, you know, you're going to all be informed about that. And hopefully we'll have, you know, special seats for fan club and stuff. Uh -huh, just about to be interrupted by the phone. How rude. All right, quick break. Hold on a sec. These people are so rude. That's somebody using the telephone downstairs. <laughs> it means they didn't get the number right the first time. Shut up! Shut up! Anyway, I suppose that just shows you that I'm a normal person, that I live on a house and things go wrong. Oh, it stopped now. I bet it starts again in a minute. It'd be really funny, actually. <laughs> Driving me mad. Okay. So, uh, that AIDS benefit thing might be happening at Christmas. And I should think I'll be taking part in that. Um, the rest of the band might not take part. What I might be doing is I'll be doing it with two singers. Uh, there's a girl called Jocelyn Brown and a guy called Wendell Morrison who's got the most brilliant voice. And when you hear their singing on the new album, you're going to go, wow, it's, it's so good. I mean, it's the sort of thing that makes you want to cry. It's, it's not like show if you sing singing, it's real feeling singing. You know when you listen to people who've got, and you listen to their voices and they've got feeling. And you know when you listen to their voices you think, oh god, I felt like that. That's how they make me feel. And that's the sort of people I've been looking for to sing on the album. So this age benefit thing would be quite good because it'd probably be the only chance you get to see us or see me before Christmas. But promise you, I really do promise that if it happens, and it's not definite yet, but if it happens, there'll be loads of people playing it as well. I think the Eurythmics, um, Bronsky Beat, me. Oh God, there's going to be millions of people doing it, so it should be really good. And if it happens, you'll definitely be informed about it. And I think it definitely will happen, actually, but at the moment, no, nobody's come up with a definite date. But I, I should think it will happen, because it's a really important thing. And, you know, I'm kind of... Um, I was really upset about not doing Live Aid. I really wanted to do that. I was so depressed. And, uh, you know, I, I can't really explain why we didn't do it. It was really sort of all political and stuff, you know, because um, when Bob Geldof called me, he was supposed to call back and he didn't call back. And uh, because Mikey and Roy were out of the country, I mean, I could have done it on my own. But um, I didn't want to do that, you know, because I thought, oh. You know, it's like all the time, boy George, boy George, boy George. And Culture Club is like four people. And I just felt like I can't do it on my own. It's like distracting from the band. But I did, I mean, as I tell you, I did feel really guilty about not doing it. You know, I mean, I, have to, I can't lie to you, I felt terrible. But uh, I think doing this AIDS benefit will be just as good because, you know, you've got little kids dying of it now and everything, so it's kind of important. And also, just to add a couple of things, anything you read in the papers, don't believe. But I saw George Michael in, um, in New York and I was saying to him, yeah, George Michael, see, and I was slagging him off on the last record. And I said to him, you know, I said, when I read things about you in the paper, I you know, you've got little kids dying of it now and everything, so it's kind of important. And also, just to add a couple of things, anything you read in the papers, don't believe, because it's like, you know, I saw George Michael in, um, in New York and I was saying to him, yeah, George Michael, see, and I was slagging him off on the last record. And I said to him, you know, I said, when I read things about you in the paper, I half believe them, and I'm bored George, right? So, I mean, imagine if I believe them, what normal people must think. So, you know, if you read things about me in the papers, don't take him seriously. Don't find out the fan club and start saying, oh, is it true, is it true? Because it's like, God, how long have we been together now? Three, four years? It's just so stupid to believe any of that rubbish. You know, and, um, you know, just, just really, you know, like, you know what you believe and you know what's true and you know all about me. So you shouldn't take any notice at all about what you read because it really, and it kind of, it's like, you know, a complication, you know. Oh, God, Sue calls me up. Guess what they've, all the fans are ringing up saying, God, what's this, is this true, is this true? Don't believe any of it. If I've got anything to tell you, I'll tell you myself. There. All right, I'm going to leave you now, but listen, please don't get um, upset about 
the record because it's going to be really worth waiting for. And I'm just, I'm just as upset as the rest of you. I mean, I, you know, you can hear me, man. I'm bored stiff. I've been sitting in my house for like, oh, for a month, and I've been in New York. I've just been doing nothing, you know. And I can't wait to get back into the routine. I can't wait to go and tour. Our next English tour is going to be brilliant. It's going to be really good, and I cannot wait for that to happen. So, and you're hearing it from the straight from the horse's mouth. I'm desperate to go on tour, and I'm desperate to see you all. And I just have to say I love you and leave you, but wait for us because it will be worth waiting for. And I know even if you leave the fan club, I'm going to get you back. So I'm going to work harder than hard to get you back. So if you think you're going to leave, just try it because I'll get you next year. I'll get you in February, and you're going to be sorry you left because you'll all come back again. I love you. Take care. Bye. Hello multicultural fans, it's John. How are you? Well, summer's nearly over. Boo-hoo, what a shame, because you know I'm such a sun worshipper. But I've had a fair amount of it this year, because we did our only tour of the year, and we went to, uh, where did we go now? Let me think, I have to think carefully. Think. Puerto Rico, great, hot, Spanish. Los Angeles, hot, American. New York, hot, American again. And Japan, which is probably the hottest place I've ever been to, even too hot for yours truly. It was about 120 degrees. But we had good fun there anyway. Where else did we go? We went somewhere else, but I can't remember. Oh, yeah, we went to Israel, which is great, you know, the homeland. <laughs> and we went to Greece, which was terrible, because they threw bottles at us. You probably read about that in the papers. But it was a um, good experience for us, because normally when we go on stage, everybody cheers. But we went on stage, and it was like, hello, we're here, and everybody went, boo! So it was a good experience for us. Everybody was brilliant, though. George was really good. He was um, handled the audience a bit better than I did. I spent most of my time swearing at them in Greek and throwing all the bottles back. I got reprimanded uh, by the rest of the band for doing that because they told me I was inciting them. But uh, we all quite enjoyed it, really, in a way. The trouble is we all started arguing after it because we all felt so aggressive. But uh, that's well under our belts now, so maybe we'll go back there next year. But I don't think we should ever play a rock festival anymore because people always say that pop groups aren't like rock bands, but you and me know better. Apart from that, this year we're going to go to Germany so we can write the rest of the album. And then we're going to Switzerland so we can record the rest of the album. We've done half of it already. And uh, it's very good because I don't think it's leaked out yet. Nobody has heard what we're doing. So uh, even we haven't heard it yet. So everybody's really excited about that. Um, in the meantime, this year, Mikey and Roy have been out the country, hopping about the world, doing various things. George has been living in New York for quite a while and working with Marilyn, which he's probably told you about. And you probably noticed from the... Uh, <laughs> the fan club mail out and I've been working with a, a group called well yeah yeah who are a girl called she sh short for Sheila Miss she boy George terrible isn't it and um, Simon Brenner who used to be in talk talk who uh, well I didn't like him very much <laughs> I don't know if you did anyway he didn't like him very much so he left them and I've been doing that all year and they've now got a, a record deal and by the time you get this diskette the record should be out it's called give you this heart so buy it because it's wonderful and there's not much of the year left, so in between doing Culture Club and Well Yeah Yeah, there isn't, really isn't much time for anything. I'm stumbling here, aren't I? Apart from when I was in Los Angeles, I got offered a film part, which was very nice, but I haven't got time to do it. A lot of people also, one thing I want to say, is a lot of people say that because we're all doing different things that the band are going to split up, which is, of course, nonsense, because Culture Club is the most important thing. But it's very important as well to do other things, because um, you, you can get really sort of stagnant if you do the same thing all the time. When everybody's been away and done their own thing like this year, when you come back together, you're really pleased to be back together. It's a bit like a family, all going their separate ways and then meeting on special days. Anyway, we'll be a lot more active next year and uh, we'll be in your town soon. So listen, my loves, I'll see you soon. Big kiss and uh, happy Jewish New Year. Bye.